Hi, it's Erica again and welcome to another demonstration and today I'm going to show you how to make your own rubber stamps. It's all using the Speedball Speedy Cut Easy. It's a rubber material that you can carve with lino cutters and then you can make your own designs. Here's one I've made earlier and also obviously you can use it with paints and inks and make your own cards. So it's a lovely way to make something that maybe it's a stamp that you can't get hold of. Obviously it does take a little bit of practice which is quite, it's quite nice to cut this one up into smaller pieces and to start with work on in smaller sections before you try thinking about much larger stamps. So we'll get started. Okay, I've already got one of the speedball cutters open. They come separately with the handle and the cutters. So you can choose, um, you can buy extra cutters and there are other designs. I've stuck to the main, the main V-shaped cutters um, because they're the ones most useful this, for this kind of work. But the nice thing is they can be stored in the bottom of the handle. The handle doesn't come with any blades, you have to buy them separately. So let me just push those aside for a minute. So this is the, the handle. You simply undo the chuck, I would call it. Um, and if you can see, these are all V cutters. Personally, I like this one. I don't know if you can see that there. It's a very small point and it's good for getting detail. You can always go for the larger ones when you've got more detail to cut, uh, larger areas, I should say. So I'll put those to one side and just make sure you've got your cutter in there nice and firmly. And as you can see, it's really nice thing to hold. So we'll start with the actual design before we go on. I've got myself a bla blank piece of paper here and I'll give you some of the principles about um, creating a design that could be a repeat pattern because that one's quite a useful one. Um, there we go, that one there. It's quite useful to have a repeat pattern because then you can make much bigger pictures with them. So this is the size of rubber that I'm going to make the stamp. Um, I'll show you, I've, this is one I've already designed, but I'll show you how I got to that finished design. So we'll take a pencil and draw around the shape. Hopefully you can see that now. So I know my stamp is, is that size. And then for symmetry, I'm going to go vertical and horizontal. It doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be roughly the size. So hopefully you can see that. Now, um, for this one, I'm going to do it in a darker pen. So hopefully you can, you can see the design. So obviously that's our centre point. And then... I'll uh, use that one as a reference. You can see where I started and hopefully this will be visible now. I started with this line. Would help if it was in the right place. <laughs> this line of uh, this line of symmetry and then So again, using the lines going away from it, like you're looking at a mirror image. And then I was thinking along the lines of a flower. So we've got a flower shape coming away from this. So we've done that side, so 
we'll think about doing it that side so we've got a mirror image but it's uh, an opposite does that make sense so we've got our bell coming out there and coming out here and obviously there's other bits of the flowers coming from this side the most important thing is when it's repeating that the other design is obviously going to come that way like so and then the other design after that will come that way so you can you can kind of see where the the design will repeat okay so the next stage was to trace that design and I'm only going to get the basics of it because it's better to have less detail going on in your initial stage because you can always add them afterwards so I'll just do the basic design and then obviously because it's a rubber stamp you want the reverse so it's a good thing with a tracing because you just flip it over and you put it on to your rubber and I'll just do a bit of it so you can see you can transfer the design obviously I was a bit neater when I did the original so there we can see you can always just add where it's not quite worked there one two three and there we go and that's the design transferred and obviously when I cut it out it looks like that um, I want to show you the page if I can find it this was my original so you can see I was thinking along the lines of this design and then I chose that one and what you can see is I stamped that one out but then it looked a bit plain and that is when I added the extra bits in there so there is no reason why you can't keep adding it's probably better to stamp something halfway through and get a feel for it than over stamp, over carve it and then there's nothing left you can always take away but you can't add it back on so it's better to start small with small design and then you know as you you can add more to it hope that makes sense um, I'm just going to show you a, a few tips um, obviously you can you can draw straight onto the onto the rubber itself and you can always just carve straight away but I think it's quite nice to have some kind of reference so um, I'm going to go with a circle because I want to show you some of the tips of cut, cutting uh, circles out so we'll go for a concentric but not perfect I quite like the idea of it being not absolutely spot on perfect so that's the start of my design I'm going to put it onto this because I can spin it because you always cut away from you I don't want to see any cut fingers here and it'll be great if I do this now on video no I, I will be very careful so can you see especially when you're cutting circles if you move the rubber and not the blade you can totally control how you're going to do that circle and I would say if you can see I'm not really gouging into the rubber at all I'm just on the top and gently guiding it through 
And you can see how easy it carves. I've got to say it's so much easier than when I used to be at school and do the lino because we'd usually get some lino that was dead old and as tough as old boots. But this is lovely and easy to, to cut with. So there we go and we can keep going with our design. turning so I would say the circles are the difficult bit so I've showed you the difficult bit the rest will be easy and then I'm going to add some decoration so we're going to have some little cuts going outwards on this one so there we go with our cuts outwards so and there we have it we've got our cuts going outwards and so we can start to see we're building up a design so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna add a secondary line to the outer quite close to the edge So keep spinning, remembering to keep your fingers behind the blade. Don't want to injury live on video, do I? <laughs> right. So there we go. And we just keep building. And obviously you can choose any sort of design that you want. I'm going to try and be difficult here and do some kind of wiggly designs. Oops, loosened the blade there. And see what I find is if you're moving the rubber and not the blade, it's much easier con to control. I just realized it's starting to look like an eye <laughs> you will find this with designs that they end up looking like something you didn't expect in the first place um, I'm gonna do little little marks Whoop, nearly and I can do little flick marks so I'm not actually completely cutting I'm just giving a little bit of detail and these little marks will show up really well on the rubber each time I'm wiping the excess off so there we go we're starting to get somewhere with that kind of that look you could go on forever I'm afraid it's quite addictive and you will be there for hours I promise this is the last bit Right, so that's our main pattern. 
what I'm going to do is, oh, I've tried to come out, is I'm going to change my blade. I'm going to go for the bigger one. I want to go in. There it is. And then I'm going to go around the outside. Remembering to keep fingers out of the way. And then I'm actually going to cut it like you would trim a, a rubber stamp. So there's no outside. It's all going to be cut away. I quite like that if some of the lines stay up, up and prominent and they get inked because it really looks like a an old-fashioned woodcut where you can see the process that's been involved. So the remainder I'm going to cut away and I'll show you how easy it is to cut it away. I mean obviously I've got some nice strong scissors here but you can see just with scissors I'm managing to cut it. So it's really easy. Cut that little bit off and that bit. And any excess, you can either use the cutter or you can use um, a sander and just sand and trim all that bit away. So a sanding block is really good for this. But this is my first attempt at using it so we'll try it out now. What I like about the surface is it's really nice for both stamps and inks and even distress ink which sometimes is is difficult to use distress ink sometimes on rubber and on especially on polymer because it bobbles up. This looks really good so oh, let me clear my space first. Don't lose my blades. Right, we'll use a scrap piece of paper to start with because it's a good way to test things out. So it's nice when you ink it up, you can see what you've got. And I do like that that's gonna catch because it will add to the kind of homemade look of it. Looking less like an eye now, thank goodness. So when I stamp, and there you can see you've got the design. This would be a nice design for a background or even for a main design, but it'd be really good for borders. And you can see they start to look a little bit um, ethnic. So you could even use it on fabrics as well. It would look really nice. Oops, making a mess of that. But now I've decided I'm on looking at the stamp, I think I can afford to take a little bit of the middle out. So I'm just gonna wipe it slightly. And then with this, oh, much easier to slip on this surface. I'm just going to take out some of the middle. Don't need it to be absolutely dead on perfect, but I just think it needs a little, a little bit more. And we'll see what that looks like. You can see how well this rubber takes the distress ink, which is 
a bit of a revelation really. So we're ready to go, we're stamping it. And there we go, that's just giving it a little bit more balance, that was a bit too heavy. And now it's a little bit lighter and I quite like it. it's not perfect, but it's a lot lighter. So that was my design. I'm, ho I'm hoping that you might give it a go too. The next stage of making a stamp would be to make something based on an image. Uh, for this, I've used a photo of, of myself. Um, I've condensed it right down to that size and then obviously with tracing paper and then with tracing paper you can get a rough idea of the image I mean the, the thing is this is not going to be perfect but it's quite nice that it's just a kind of facsimile of what a face is rather than it being my exact face. So what I did was I just, as you can see, draw in the black bits. So you can you can roughly see there there's a, there's a face there. And then what I did was obviously you reverse it and then I traced it onto the rubber and then I cut a design out. It's not perfect. It's my first attempt at doing a face. So you know, you can't always expect it to be spot on first time but I quite like the the look of it it's not it, it's it's a little bit like me but it's not not exact and I think with practice you could you could get them to look really spot on but what um, one thing that's quite important is that you have um, something like Photoshop take the photo it's quite nice if it's quite contrasty between the light and dark. So it's quite nice if you've got a strong light on it. And then what I did was I made it obviously black and white. And then on the settings for contrast, I set the contrast up higher. So the black and the white becomes more distinct. And it gives you something easier to work with. So when I had this, this is the stamp that I made from it. It's just an idea to give you, you know, you can have a go. So there it is. I quite like it. I don't think it's perfect, but I quite like that it's not perfect. And I've used it in my journal here and I just used some text. I've just handwritten that and then with a black pen just gone over the top of it. The background is all distress inks um, with a stencil. I quite like that I've used this little square stencil to look like a, almost like a pixelated image from a computer. So it's, it's kind of, for me, it represents handmade and computers sort of mixed together. Or is that getting too deep now? Probably. But anyway, this is this is what this is what it sort of represents for me. This is what my art journaling is about. I do a page and then, you know, you can reevaluate and analyze it and see what what it's what it's really about. So um, that's why I love journaling. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> I'm going too far off piste now to and I'll come back to it. So the stamping. This is a little heart stamp that I made. 
and I've just used it in a repeat pattern and this is with paint so I can show you just how nice it is with paint you can use a brayer and roller the paint onto the stamp or you can do the, the technique I use often and um, with a little puddle of paint and pick it up and stamp it but you can see you get a nice image with paint as well see I've explained before with that stamp because it's a repeat image they match up and then you that's the, the beauty of this, you never know what you're going to get because when you're stamping out, it's one thing to stamp a stamp but then when you use it in repeat formations, you it becomes something else. So it's a really nice way to use your stamps and really experiment with pattern. So, thank you very much for joining us and um, I hope to see you next time. Thank you.